Patients all over the world often rely on science and faith when they embark on a course of treatment. But at the Casa, the emphasis is squarely on faith. The people who come here, seeking to be cured by John of God, believe, as he does, that spirits of the dead are using him as a tool for healing. Na hora que eu vou receber esses bons espíritos, in the moment that he prepares to receive the helping spirits that God has honored him with, then he says the prayer and he says, "God, thy will be done." And he receives the spirit, the helping spirit, and then he goes to sleep. He sleeps. He has no memory. Joam claims he began communicating with spirits as a young man when he fell unconscious and channeled King Solomon. Since then, he says he has channeled more than 30 spirits, or entities, as he refers to them. These range from St. Francis of Assisi to Osvaldo Cruz, a celebrated Brazilian doctor who died nearly 100 years ago. Joam believes that these entities have made it possible for him to carry out thousands of procedures. Some are completely non-invasive. Others involve some form of actual operation. Lynn Debenham has first-hand experience of the latter. Six years ago, Joao removed a large benign tumor from her back. All I was doing at the time um, when it because he came and he closed my eyes and all I was doing was just with my eyes closed going please God don't let him put scissors up my nose please God don't let him put scissors up my nose because I knew he did those Lynn had already witnessed Raum inserting a 10 centimeter long surgical instrument into a patient's nose a procedure he uses to treat a variety of ailments Joao now incorporated obviously um, came and took me by the shoulders and turned me around to face the wall. So it was a big sigh of relief because I thought, good, no scissors up the nose. <laughs> and he led me to the triangle and I stood for maybe about 10 minutes of the operation and then they brought a stool, a stool in and I sat on that for the rest of it. And he removed the whole thing. Professor Gary Schwartz, a neuroscientist at the University of Arizona, is a specialist in the afterlife. He has received government funding for his research. Schwartz reviewed the tape of Lynn's operation. I mean, one of the things that's very clear about this is that this is an intensive amount of, of cutting with relatively little bleeding. And there's a lot of pulling and tearing of tissue. And yet we do not see this woman showing any manifestation of flinching. We're not hearing any any cries. The initial incision, I felt it was like a paper cut sting, but after that, I could feel everything he was doing, but no pain. Under normal circumstances, people would be screaming in pain at this point. They would be flinching. And of course, the, the side effect of all this is, of course, you'd see a lot more bleeding. When I felt that first incision, I gritted my teeth and I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna feel this, you know? And it was like, I was, you know, I really thought I was gonna feel some pain. But after that initial incision, I could feel everything he did, everything, um, with putting his finger in and poking around and pulling and twisting. Any normal individual who didn't want to have physical surgery and then to endure this would also be, you could say, not properly prepared. And, you know, the whole thing, it came out in three pieces, two small pieces and then one very big piece. And I could feel everything. And it was also like there was a part of me that I could see it as if I was standing behind me watching it. But I was fully aware of everything in my body as well. And I wasn't in a trance. I wasn't knocked out, nothing. I was very, very conscious. It defies any kind of normal expectation. John of God may be best known for his invasive procedures without the use of anesthetic. But there is another sort of operation that many of his patients say is just as effective. It happens without physical contact and is known as invisible surgery. Roland Nip has arrived at the Casa with a defective heart valve. 
his doctors have recommended an open heart operation, followed by a lifetime of medication. In order to avoid the treatment his doctors have prescribed, he is determined to take action himself. My cardiologist told me, you can't do any physical activity above 120 heartbeats a minute. I said, well, I, I can't do anything then. So I stopped uh, surfing, I stopped uh, kickboxing, I stopped weightlifting, I stopped kung fu. So... Roland has agreed to allow Douglas Busby, a trained doctor, to examine him both before and after his treatment at the Casa. Although he's hopeful and curious, Roland expects neither an instant nor a complete cure. He is planning to see his own consultant for a follow-up after he returns home to Hawaii. Where I have the stethoscope placed is directly over the mitral area. And you've what I heard when I listened to his heart was the sound of mitral regurgitation, the typical roar of the blood flowing backwards. His option is really only open repair. But Roland's not ready to concede to open heart surgery just yet. His first procedure under John of God's care will be invisible surgery. In preparation, he takes part in a session that looks like group meditation. But those who have experienced it speak of something more profound. Just being in there, in my heart just was kind of was blown wide open, and the energy was was fantastic. These people are in what is called the current room. What is the current? Believers say it is conscious energy, energy that is focused on healing. <laughs> 